Gunshot wounds are the most common cause of death here in Somalia's Pantland state. Vladimir is a Ukrainian surgeon who came to the city of Basasa almost a year ago. But he says he is not ready to make his diagnosis for the whole nation, based on local statistics. As for the people, they do have a big problem with their medical care and with their education. But it's easy for me to judge and compare it with how things are in Ukraine or Russia. If only these people had access to knowledge, their lives might have taken a different twist. Doctors never leave the hospital without a bodyguard or two. All the medical staff are under the protection of a powerful clan in Basasa. The beach is about the only attraction here. It's the Gulf of Aden, and it means that the pirates are never too far off. Vladimir doesn't mind treating all kinds of people. After all, it's his job, and he came all the way down here, chasing money to support his whole family. <laughs> I miss my daughter madly. I never thought I could be such a desperate father, but I really miss my girl. I say I really, really miss her. This ship has been working in the Gulf of Aden. Pirates have attacked it a couple of times, but it's managed to escape. This man is the head of the port of Aden. Recently, he's been very concerned. Hijacking attempts have doubled since 2008, and ship's captains don't feel safe in these waters. Kahtan Hussein knows how it feels. Back in the 1993, when he worked on a tanker like this, he met the pirates himself. They seized the captain and me, and took us to inland Somalia. The whole 500 kilometers we rode, I had guns against my head and my chest. There were ten of them against two of us. I'm remembering this now, and it gives me the chills. The rest of the ship's crew were not expecting to see them ever again. But the Yemeni government paid their ransom, and they were released. Since then, whenever Kaftan is at sea, he sticks to one ground rule. Pirates don't attack here at this time of year because of the strong wind. Usually it's from May to September. So they attack in this part of the Gulf, in the direction of Bab al Mandab. But in September the prevailing winds change, and then more attacks happen east of Aden, near Al Mukalla. Warships from the navies of almost two dozen countries are currently deployed off Somalia's coast to counter frequent pirate attacks. They have to patrol an area of about six million square kilometers in the Gulf of Aden, and it's impossible to prevent all the hijackings. Still, the International Task Force had a number of successes, and in April 2009, the Russian destroyer Admiral Pantelev played its part. This is a very fierce weapon. Look at the bullet for the automatic rifle and compare it with this one. You can imagine what it could do. It was enough for the pirates to see this machine gun through their binoculars. They retreated immediately. They are cowards. And they can only attack defenseless ships with no guard on board. It was the destroyer's first day in the Gulf when it ran across a pirate mothership. The warning shots went unheeded, so the gunners had to fire at the escaping vessel. The pirates didn't fight back despite all the weapons they had aboard. The ship was well equipped with new Japanese engines and top-notch positioning systems. The question was, who owned all of that? We're just catching small fish and letting the sharks swim free. The piracy won't stop until we get rid of these sharks. Two or three hundred dollars is a gigantic sum of money for Somalis. So where do the ransom millions go? They must have someone in charge out there. The destroyer Admiral Pantelev detained these men in the Gulf of Aden, along with 28 other alleged pirates. He's now waiting for trial and is still insisting on his innocence. I'm done speaking with journalists. Interpreter, tell them that a righteous Muslim will wait till the moment when Allah sets him free, inshallah. I have nothing to say to my family in Somalia, because they don't have a TV set. I'm in jail, and that's all.
First, you have to prove in a court the fact that they're actually pirates. Once a Danish Navy ship detained a boat packed with guns, so they contacted their commanders and received an order to sink the guns and let the pirates go. Because if you bring them all the way to Copenhagen, by the time the court proceedings begin, the pirates would have already been granted resident permits. Valentin Bartashov was the captain of a ship hijacked in May 2008. The crew were released after 41 days in captivity after a nearly million dollar ransom was paid to the pirates. In this photo you see the boat that brought the money. A negotiator came aboard to check if we were all alive. Then he took a couple of clan chiefs with him and later they came back with a box of money. But before leaving the ship, the hijackers acted as if they weren't the ones who'd received the ransom. That led Valentin to believe the gunmen were just pawns in the hijacking game. International insurance companies have introduced a special type of insurance called kidnapping and racket. It covers the owner's liability from the hijacking till the moment the ransom is parachuted down to the pirates. It also ensures the services of security agencies that conduct negotiations with the hijackers. Kidnap insurance costs have soared tenfold in the Gulf of Aden in the last year and a half. So you can see for yourself who benefits from this. Experienced seamen say that one of the ways to secure your ship while in the Gulf of Aden is to simply unplug all the satellite navigation equipment. The data record systems are the easiest way to track the movement of any vessel, and that information can be used both for good and evil. Mohammed Haidar is a spokesman for Sheba, a Yemeni state research center in capital Sana. According to Sheba, nearly $150 million have been paid in ransoms to the pirates in 2008. On top of that, Yemen's losses from soaring piracy have been estimated at $350 million. We have information that the Somali pirate gangs have a far-reaching spy network. One of their head offices is in London. I'm not sure what kind of information is available to British authorities on the issue, but we believe the pirates either have access to databases of international shipping companies or they're capable of hacking into them. 18-year-old Osman Bukhari lives in the Somali refugee camp near Aden. He came here by boat from Basasa where he used to live under one roof with Somali pirates. He was running small errands for the hijackers, and they were even playing soccer together. Back then, in April of 2009, they hijacked yet another ship. The ship was called Maersk, Alabama, from America. It was delivering food to Kenya. They kidnapped the captain of the ship. Why do the pirates do that? Well, there's no government. There's a civil war going on. There's nothing to do, no job. So they found themselves a job, kidnapping people. Osman lives with his brother, a former fisherman. However, now none of them have jobs. So they have turned to selling a mild drug called chat to make a living. Osman hopes he's not staying in Yemen for long. It would be great if the UN could help me to emigrate to some European country or to the USA or Canada. I could get my education there. But here in this poor country, I don't think I'll achieve anything. I just hope it doesn't get any worse. Vladimir spent almost a year in Somalia working in Basasa for the local hospital. It was his first foreign experience, and he had a very intense surgical practice there. I used to treat pirates, but it wasn't as often as it might seem. Not every person who has a boat there is a pirate. There aren't that many of them in Somalia, and nobody likes them there. The authorities and people are living there independently of one another. People understand that they need the authorities, and the authorities realize they need people, but interaction between them is very insignificant. These people regulate their lives by themselves, and they are proud of that. It's a country where it's hard to plan anything. When they want to plan something, they usually say, inshallah, it means if God so wishes. So now I'll just spend some time home, and maybe in a year we'll go back there again.
While the United Nations continues its calls to combat the piracy epidemic off Somalia's coast, the number of actual attacks in the Gulf of Aden is still on the rise. Many believe the scourge of the sea has to be fought on land. But turning the troubled country into a hell for the pirates is unlikely to make it a paradise for the rest of the nation. Besides, Somalis are not the only pirates involved. Piracy may go beyond its borders, serving the interests of the international crime. And while the pirates are behind the attacks in these waters, something even more sinister may be behind them. <laughs> 